A trip to the Toho Cinema outside Kinshicho Station today, one of only two in Japan to premiere Nikatsu Pictures' brand new sumo movie, Sumo Do, Successors to the Samurai, directed by Eiji Sakata. If you ever get a chance to see it, here's what to expect. Firstly, the good news plenty of match day action. Sakata's crew were in the Kokugikan for January and May 2019, and even if you've already seen the bouts online, I'm sure you'll admire the way they shoot them. This is exactly how sumo should be shot. Close-ups, sudden zooms, a moving camera, and of course, the amped-up sounds of battle. Basically, all the techniques the Japanese successfully use to sell rugby. There is literal head-splitting action from Sadano Umi and Kagayaki, and their thoughts on the incident, while another injury scene with no build-up is genuinely shocking and drives home just how precarious a wrestler's existence is. Secondly, there's plenty of training room action. Sakata builds his piece around two of the more successful stables, Sakaigawa and Takadagawa where multiple salaried wrestlers toil for practice ring supremacy. The Sakaigawa sessions made a good attempt to show the various sumo levels, with each wrestler introduced seeming slightly stronger than the last. They start with Tsushimanada and Toyohibiki of Division 3, before Sadano Umi, Miyogiryu, and then Ozeki Goedo smash them and each other out of the way. Meanwhile, at Takadagawa, the shuddering impacts of Ryuden on Kagayaki get adrenaline racing and enhance Sadano Umi's on-camera claim that every day for us is like a traffic collision. Thirdly, there's interesting behind-the-scenes stuff. Miyogiryu's trip to the gym is the highlight, with anybody lifting any kind of weights sure to be impressed. His stablemate's painful trip to the chiropractor helps reveal the part of the body a wrestler is most likely to injure. And Takadagawa's Sakura showcases his legendary cooking skills in the stable kitchen. His chanko is said to be the best in sumo. Add in the wrestler interviews, the chanting of the Sakaigawa stable creed, and Ryuden's wedding party, and we have a 105-minute picture that any sumo fan could enjoy. It even got a round of applause after today's showing. But as a story, sadly, it doesn't really work, and I think I've pieced together the reasons why. Director Sakata had very little contact with sumo until being asked to put a show together for his employer, TBS Television, three years ago. That show was basically tasked with introducing Takadagawa's Chanko to Japan's most famous overweight cross-dresser, Matsuko Deluxe. This movie, minus Matsuko, is basically an extension of that show, with Koto Tsurugi, Sumo's resident artist who draws pictures like these, working as chief Sumo consultant on both projects. Now, while Koto Tsurugi's artwork clearly adds to this picture, his on-screen comments and interviews with Coach Takadagawa do not. He's a Sadogatake stable man, not directly connected with either featured stable, meaning, technical comments aside, he adds nothing to the story being told. Sadano Umi's ex-wrestler of a father or Miyogiryu's Saitama Sakai coach Yamada would have added far more value. Sakata also faced severe constraints. Working independently of his employer, TBS, he was only free to film on vacation days. And, relying mainly on his own pocket, he was seemingly unable to afford a trip to Osaka to shoot the crucial tournament in between the ones he showed us. You know, the final one of the entire Heisei era, and the one which sees main character Goedo head to his hometown the perfect place to paint a fuller picture of him. One suspects that due to political reasons, he was also unable to put the ex-emperor, then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, and American President Donald Trump in the picture, even though all of them were watching key matches that he filmed. These are all really important plot points to leave out, though. 
There's also a central problem of confused direction. For me, with this picture, Sakata has two options. The first is to cover the two stables, but just for the one tournament, thoroughly, and then play on the rivalries between the key wrestlers. Sakata tries to do this with Myogiryu versus Ryuden, but it looks simply thrown in after a eureka moment, rather than woven into a coherent story which makes us care about the result. The second option for him was to film two tournaments, but just the one stable, and show how the wrestlers grew from the first to the second. I think we'd all like to see how the life of a third division man dramatically changes once he's promoted to salaried level. But there's none of that here. We also know Sumo Chiefs request editorial controls which tend to stifle creativity. It's why I wonder if Sakata actually knew of the glaring differences in philosophy between Sakagawa and Takadagawa, but, so as not to undermine Sumo's image of unity, elected not to play them up. As you know, a well-run stable is exactly in the mould of its master. Coach Sakaigawa, who turned pro at 22 after university, is keen for his charges to get a life education outside the ring that makes them well-rounded individuals. Sadano Umi hints at this on camera, but Toyo Hibiki really needed to be brought in here. I'll tell you why in another piece. Coach Takadagawa, on the other hand, has only known professional sumo since 15, and, in his active wrestling days, was convinced that a start at the bottom of the ladder made him mentally tougher than university graduates parachuted in. That's why, in contrast to Sakagawa, who tends to like his recruits to be at least 18, Takadagawa would rather have them at 15 and focused relentlessly on fighting. These are the differences between the Myogiryu Goedos and the Ryuden Kagayakis which make their bouts more interesting. And Saitama Sakae, which was merely alluded to, is also key to understanding this movie, surely. Sakae's coach Yamada practiced sumo with coach Sakaigawa at Nihon University in the 1980s. That's why he's comfortable sending the Myogiryus and Goedos to him. Several defining features of a wrestler's character are formed long before he takes that first walk through his stable doors, and I wish Sakata had shown us more of that. But as I said though, what I did see from him was well shot and action-packed, and I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy the result. <laughs>